Howdy guys, welcome back to BRG Photography. This is Ben and in today's video, I'm going to show you a few different ways that we can remove a color cast from your photos. Okay guys, welcome back. What I want to go ahead and do first is just talk quickly about what a color cast is, uh, what causes it, and then how we can correct it. Now, usually a color cast is caused by either an incorrect white balance setting on your camera, but if you are shooting in RAW, and hopefully if you shot a gray card or a white card as a reference, uh, you should be able to fix that pretty easily in your RAW processing step, whether you use Capture One or Lightroom, and that should eliminate most of your color cast problems. Now, another common cause of a color cast is, particularly in this photo, when you have something in the surrounding area um, reflecting colored light onto your subject. So here, I'm shooting in a studio, and the yellow backdrop is actually reflecting the lighting that I'm using and it's bouncing that light back onto her skin, but it's taking some of that yellow color with it, thus giving the image this very yellow color cast that we can see in her swimsuit and on her skin and just the image in general. So what I'd like to do today is introduce three techniques uh, to help you remove a color cast from your photo. Two of them are going to be very quick and one of them is a little bit more involved, but you have a bit more control over um, your color correction. Alrighty. So actually the first technique I want to teach is actually one I learned quite recently from another YouTuber. Uh, it kind of timed up perfectly as I was in the process of making this uh, color cast correction video. I came across his channel and he has a really good technique for removing a color cast that I was unaware of. So I want to go ahead and share it with you guys. But um, his channel name is called Graphical, I think, and I'll leave a link below. And you should definitely go check out his channel. He has some really good videos on Affinity Photo. And he really goes into the math and the understanding of how these techniques work. And he seems to understand it a lot better than I do. So definitely go ahead and check him out. Uh, but his technique was to, first, we're going to go ahead and grab a color picker. And we're going to pick a radius of, just say, 5x5. Five five. And we're going to select something in the image which we feel should be white. So in this case, in her swimsuit, she has these white stripes. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to select that color. It should have put that color in your little color swatch thing up here. And with that color selected, we are going to go to Layer, New Fill Layer. And it's going to go ahead and give us a new fill layer with that previous color that we selected. And all we're going to do is change our blend mode from Normal to Divide. And what that did is it made that color that we picked, as you can see here, and it basically turned it white. So that was before, that was after, and it did a really fantastic job of getting a lot of that yellow cast off her skin. Uh, it did brighten up the image, but I think in this case it worked okay because the image was a little bit underexposed anyways. But if we thought it was a bit too harsh, we could always lower the opacity. Or if we feel that it was too harsh on the highlights, we could go into a blend uh, range and just lower the impact on the highlights. And I think this effect is really good because it's really quick and I think it will work for quite a lot of photos, but you can see it's not really perfect. So if we come down here to the swimsuit, we can see that actually in this black swimsuit, it's still quite yellow and there's a, quite a lot of red in it. So this technique doesn't really solve the like black balance problem. It really fix the whites but the blacks are still a little bit tinted. And this might not work if you don't have a white reference in your image. So let's say, for example, you have an image where you don't have a white reference point or you don't have anything that should be white. How are you gonna do that? Well, another technique is to basically add the opposite color of the color cast. So in this image, the color cast is obviously yellow. So in order to basically erase that yellow, we need to start adding blue into the image. Uh, why do we know that? Well, just because we look at a color wheel here, the opposite of yellow is blue. But how do we know what color blue to add to get it correct? Well, it's pretty easy to find out. What we're going to do with our layer selected, we are going to duplicate this layer here. And with that layer, with that duplicated layer, we are going to go to filters, blur, and average. And this is going to give us the average color that is present throughout the whole image. And all we need to do now is we need to just invert that image. So now we have this kind of blue, which is the exact opposite of that previous yellow. And then we're going to add this yellow into our image. And we're going to do that by changing our blend mode from normal to soft light. Now, obviously, this is a bit too blue, but we can fix that by lowering the opacity, maybe starting around 50%, maybe going a bit lower. 
and find something that we kind of like. So that was the before and that was the after. And we can see that it's still a bit white and oh, sorry, yellow in the swimsuit. So we can use this as a reference to kind of gauge what we think looks okay. And you can see it looks pretty good. Maybe there's a bit too much blue in the skin, but we can basically uh, tweak that later. So this is also a really good starting point. I think with a lot of these techniques, you're not gonna find one technique that's gonna fix everything perfectly. You're gonna find one technique that gets you in the ballpark, and then you're gonna have to do some manual adjustments later. So we could go in later and uh, adjust the hue, saturation, color balance in her skin individually. So this is another great technique, especially when you don't have a reference point that you can point to what should be white or even what should be black. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now, one more technique, which I really do like, and um, it's a bit more advanced, but I think you have a lot more control over uh, the color cast in your image, and that's gonna be using something called the waveform monitor to help us uh, determine the uh, true white and true blacks in our image. So if you don't have this waveform monitor up, you can find it by going to your view, studio, and scope. Now, uh, if you have any experience doing video color grading or video editing, these waveform monitors won't be new to you. But if you're strictly doing photography and retouching, you may have never used a waveform monitor or seen one before. So before I even get started, I want to just quickly explain uh, what a waveform monitor is. Uh, right now we're looking at an intensity waveform monitor, which is basically showing us just the exposure values in the image. So you can kind of think of it as a more detailed histogram where a histogram will show you how much bright and dark areas are in your image this one shows you the same thing but it actually shows you a graphical representation from left to right of your image so let me go ahead and just show this to you really quick so if i were to get a curves adjustment layer here and if i lower the exposure you're going to see the whole intensity of our exposure just comes down if i were to raise the exposure it goes up so you can see that this line here represents the exposure in our image and what's interesting is like I said it goes from left to right so this bold yeah, this bold white line right here that's actually the exposure level of this yellow background these dips that we find here this is probably the parts of her skin uh, these dark areas right here this is definitely her swimsuit and we can see that by if I were to take a paintbrush and let's do just let's swap these colors here if I were to take a paintbrush, let's just make it uh, not hard at all, make it a little bit bigger. If I were to draw a black line straight down here on this right side, you're going to see that dip in exposure on this right side, right exactly where that black line is. If I were to overlap this waveform onto the image, you would see that these line up perfectly. If I were to do something like a, let's do like a, dark gray and I come on this side and draw a dark gray line you should see a dip in exposure right there and vice versa if I were to make if I were to just go pure white and do a pure white line over that you should see that white line where the bright the exposure is really really bright so this is how a waveform monitor works and uh, we want we need to know this just so we can understand the mechanics behind it all right so let's go ahead and just delete that now let me go ahead and delete these things too. Now we're going to look at specifically the RGB uh, parade. And the RGB parade, actually before I show this, the RGB, this is the RGB waveform. This is basically the exact same thing we saw, but this time there's color information. The previous uh, intensity waveform wasn't showing us any color information. It was just exposure values. This one shows us uh, exposure values plus the amount of red, green, and blue in the image. And we can see here there's a lot of red a lot of green and not a lot of blue, which is giving us this color cast. Now to make it easier for us to judge, we're gonna change it to the RGB parade, which is the exact same view, but we're now just seeing them side by side. So we can clearly see the definitions and separation in red, green, and blue. And we're gonna use this tool to help us evaluate what we feel should be true black and true white. And in this image, it's great because she has a black swimsuit with white stripes, so we can really judge this easily. So let's go ahead and get started. What I wanna do first, I wanna go ahead and make a crop here. And I want to just isolate this part of the image where I'm only seeing uh, her swimsuit. So I'm just seeing black and I'm just seeing white, just like that. Now, right off the bat, you can see the change in the uh, waveform monitor. 
and this is now showing us just black and white but according to our rgb parade we can see that those levels are not even uh, if this was a true black and white image for example if i were to add a black and white thing you can see right here the image became black and white and this bottom lower half of the exposure which is a dark part of the swimsuit that is now true black because we have an even amount of red green and blue in it and vice versa for the white white is an even amount of red green and blue so what we need to do is we need to basically fix that so we can make this looking how that previous black and white adjustment looked so let's go ahead and do that with a curves so in the curve we can see there's way too much red in the darks and highlights let's go ahead and switch to our red channel here let's just bring the reds down till it gets about even was that green that looks good there and maybe same thing for the highlights maybe lower it a bit something like that now we can obviously see too that there's not enough blue in the image let's go ahead and add some blue into the shadows maybe just get it as best you can and then let's add a lot of blue in the highlights it looks like to get it looking more white and as you tweak, you may have to actually come back a little bit and lower the blue in the shadows. All right, so something like that. So just by looking at this image here, if we turn it off, we can see that was our before and that was our after. And we now have a more truer value of black and white. And it's confirmed by the waveform monitor here. If we go to document and unclip canvas, we will see that it did a great job of correcting uh, that yellow color cast out of the image. It's taken it out of her skin, which is really good. And it's also taken it out of the bathing suit. So we went from there to here. And so that is another really interesting technique. And the cool thing is that you can combine these techniques. So let's say for example, now, uh, let's try that first technique. Let's go ahead and go to our color picker here. Let's go ahead and pick Actually, that color is still selected. Let's go ahead and pick this new color. We're going to select on that. Okay, then we're going to make a new fill layer with that color. And we can see it's actually much, much closer to uh, true white. Still a little bit off. I can look at here in the saturation. There's about 6% of saturation. But if we change that to divide and then maybe lower the opacity a bit, that might fix that a little bit as well. And if we even wanted to, we could even do our previous technique where we're going to merge all these to one new layer, do a blur, do an average. That's the average color present in the image. Let's go ahead and invert that. And then let's change that to soft light. And then let's lower the opacity quite a bit. And we can get something maybe around 12% like so. And I think a combination of all those three techniques did a really good job of going from this very heavily yellowed image into an image where her skin looks good, the bathing suit is properly black and white, and now the image is ready to start retouching. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. Uh, there's a lot more information I could talk about. Uh, there was another tool that I wanted to talk about, specifically the um, vector scope, which is a really good way to kind of assess skin tones and the amount of color in your image, uh, but that takes a little bit longer, so maybe I'll do another video on it in the future. But I hope that these three techniques uh, gave you a good way to remove color casts in your photos and uh, possibly I might go into more detail later with different examples because like I said there's not going to be one technique that's going to just be a perfect fit for your image. Most of these techniques are going to give you a good starting point so that you can then kind of tweak and work from there. But anyways guys uh, as always thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.